Hi students, I am Pravin Sebastian Paul. In this lecture, we are discussing the UML use case diagrams. So my dear students, a use case diagram represents the various requirements of the user. This use case model can be used in the most of the phases of a program designing and it consists of actors, different scenarios, communication between the actors and the use cases as well as the relationship between various use cases. This can only be summarized some of the relationship between the use case actor and systems and generally the use cases deals with the total number of users associated with a particular system and how the users are interacting with the different processes. It does not show the order in which each steps are performed to achieve the goals of various steps. The different use case diagram symbols associated are system which is represented with a rectangle with the system name, actors are represented with the actor symbol, use cases are represented with ellipse or circle and the relationships are represented with arrow lines. So my dear students, now we are considering an example of email system. So while sending an email, it is simply known that a user can send a e email to another user. That is user 1 is sending an email to the user 2. So while communicating while with an email, first of all we have to log in into the system then we should draft an email and we should send that email. So this login process or the entire process can be administrated with the website or email admin and the entire system is known as the email system. So here we can see three different actors. Those actors are user1, user2 and admin and three different processes which is enclosed in an ellipse and the different processes are login, draft, mail and mail inbox and the different processes are encapsulated in a system known as email system. So as we mentioned the system associated is the email system, the actors associated are user1, user2 and admin, the processes are login, draft, mail and mail inbox and the relationships are between the users that is the actors and the different processes. So my dear students now we should mention what are the purposes of use case diagram. Use case diagrams are typically developed in the early stages of development and the people often apply use case modeling for the following purposes. Those purposes include specify the context of a system that is what system we are dealing with what are the major associations dealing within that system. Secondly, the capture the requirement of the system that is we should capture and we should analyze and we should replicate the systems associated with that particular problem. Third one is validate a system architecture. Fourth one is drive implementation and generate the test cases and finally developed by the analyst together with the domain experts in order to identify who are the actors associating with a particular system and what are the major processes in that particular system. Now we should deal with each of the factors associating in a use case diagram. Firstly, we are considering the term system. A system is whatever we are dealing with. A system can be a website, a software, application or any programs associated with our system. So the system is represented with a rectangle with the system name in the topmost corner. So previously we had mentioned our email system. The email system is represented within a rectangle with the system name as email system. Now we are moving to the next term actors. Actors are someone or something that uses the system to achieve a goal. So the actors are end users or end processes which is achieving something from a system. The actors can be represented with an actor symbol and it could be a person, device or another system. The actors are represented by any of these three ways in UML whether we can represent an actor symbol with the actor name in the bottom. Second way is to mention with a rectangle with actor as the tag 
or we can represent the actor within a rectangle with actor name so common one is the third representation that is an actor symbol with the actor name so now let us consider the actors associating with this email system so the email system has a user one actor another another actor is user two so there we can see primary actors and secondary actors primary actors are generally represented in the left hand side of a system and the secondary actors are generally represented in the right hand side of the system so here the user one is a primary actor and the admin is the secondary actor associated with this system so now we go to the use cases the use case represents the flow of events or sequence of activities possible in a system a use case can be executed by more than one actor and a use case is represented within an ellipse with the use case name so here in this system an email system we are considering the different use cases or processes like login, draft an email, inbox, outbox, folders, etc. So any so an email system has two different actors, and we can see five different use cases. Those use cases are login, draft email, inbox, outbox, and folders. So now we are moving to the term association. The participation of an actor in a use case is shown by the connection of an actor to a use case by a solid line. The actors may be connected to the use cases by associations, indicating that the actor and the use case communicate with one another using messages. An actor may use more than one use case. For example, in our system, email, the users associate with the system with the use case or the process login and draft inbox outbox and folders there are associations from user to the login draft email inbox outbox and folders and these association like draft mail is also associated with admin and also the inbox is associated with admin outbox is associated with admin and finally folders are also associated with admin so this is how we are representing the relationships so next one is the include relationship an include relationship shows the dependency between a base case and an included use case when a use case is depicted as using the functionality of another use case, the relationship between the use cases is named as include or users relationship. That is, for example, a transaction and a login use case can be represented with an include relationship. That is, a general transaction must include a login procedure. So, for example, if you want to transact or operate the Google Pay, the Google Pay transaction, first of all, before every transaction, we should log in into the system. Similarly, if we want to send an email, generally in a desktop system, we should log in into that particular system. So, the login, so here the transaction or the process is associated or included with a another process called login. So here, for example, in our email system, the users log in into the system and the different processes are associated and we are representing all these processes and the login process must include the verify password that is before login or while executing the login procedure, the process must include the verify password. So next we are representing the extender relationship. The extend relationships are more important they show the optional functionality or system behavior. The extend is a tag. This relationship is used to include the optional behavior from an extending use case in an extended use case. So another one is generalization relationship. A generalization relationship means that the child use case inherit the behavior the child may add or override the behavior of the parent and the generalization is represented with the simple triangle so here an account is shown as a use case 
and we can see two other use cases savings account and current account and this savings account and current account are child classes which inherit the properties of the base class account and thus this representation is shown as account is inherited towards the base class savings account and current account and this generalization is represented with an open triangle. So my dear students in this lecture we have discussed the use case. A use case represents the relationship between the actor system and different processes associated. So here in this email system we had shown different users like user and admin and different processes like login, draft mail, inbox, outbox and folders which are represented within an ellipse and the system is represented within a rectangle and the users or actors are represented by the actor symbol. So my dear students hope you had understood this topic. So dear students kindly go through this assignment question. Our question is write notes on UML use case diagrams. So my dear students in the upcoming lecture we will discuss another example relating with the UML use case diagrams. So my dear students see you soon. Until then goodbye, thank you and all the best.